So good morning, everybody. Uh, I would like to start with the thanks. And first, thank you all for coming here, those who come from near and those who come from far away. Uh, this is, a, I find, a unique opportunity to learn from really the best in the world on chemical weapons, on toxic remnants of war, things that we hardly exposed or talk about in Israel, uh, which I think is very weird, because most of us remember the first Gulf War, Gulf War when we all sat with the mask in the uh, sealed room, hoping that uh, in some weird way it will protect us. Uh, we remember uh, not long ago when, when we thought that the Americans are going to attack in Syria and we're sure that we're going to be yet again uh, uh, attacked or uh, threatened with chemical weapons. And yet we hardly ever talk about chemical weapons. Uh, I was looking for, for experts to talk in Hebrew or that write in Hebrew about chemical weapons in Israel and it, was, um, it, it came down to one name. Uh, and again, it's weird. We are being threatening, th we are talking about nuclear weapons all the time and yet no one ever really threatened us with nuclear weapons. It seems like when things are really... Uh, really coming to the point of things that we can actually make our government move on, we just simply don't talk. We look to the other side. Israel has signed the Chemical Weapons Convention and was, I think, among the first states to sign it, and yet never ratified, so basically we're not part of it. I can tell you that I was the at the meeting of the, of the CWC, the, the Chemical Weapons Convention, CWC, uh, last year, Syria was there as a full member, and when they had a closed session, I found the Israeli delegation with me outside. Israel cannot listen to the closed sessions because Israel is not really part of the CWC, and I find it weird. Another thing that we might not know is that Israel is a very unique state. Israel is the only state, apart from South Sudan, that only exists for two years, that hasn't ratified and is not part of any of the significant weapons of mass destruction treaties. Even, if even North Korea is part for more treaties than Israel. Isn't that sad? But the most sad thing that I found is how much we are able to not see, not look, not know about anything that has something to do with weapons of mass destruction. We talk about nuclear weapons all the time, as long as they belong to Iran, which doesn't possess nuclear weapons. We talk about Syria chemical stockpile, but never about ours. We don't ask questions as a society. We have uh, 120 members of parliament, and maybe two of them have ever dealt with the topic apart from Dov Hanin and Tamar Zandberg, who decided to form the first lobby in the parliament uh, for, for WMD uh, disarmament. We have a prime minister that is obsessed with the topic, and yet we don't really know anything about it. And I can tell you that one of the hardest things to do while organizing this uh, kind of unique uh, event, unique because it doesn't happen enough or at all, one of the hardest things was to convince NGOs or members of civil society that this is something that actually concerns us, that this is okay to come and talk and to hear and to learn together. So I want to stop at that and go back to thank yous because I think that the most important thing today is to learn, to be curious, to ask questions, to remember that there are no stupid questions when it comes to something that we learn uh, for the first time. I'm very looking forward to this day because as part of civil society I also know nothing about chemical weapons and um, I think that it's a great opportunity for us all to learn, to know and to go back to our communities maybe to tell what we've learned here. Maybe one day, uh, soon I hope, uh, make Israel ratify the, the chemical weapons conventions. I'd like to thank Paul Walker sits here very much because he made this possible uh, with the great contribution of both knowledge and money and, uh, and great contacts. And I would like to thank Kaspar Heller 
uh, that represent Greencross, uh, sorry, Paul is from Greencross International, as you can see, I'm a bit nervous. Paul is from Greencross International and formed the, the Chemical Weapons Conventions Coalition. We are part of this coalition. And Caspar Heller represents Greencross uh, Switzerland that finance our work throughout the year. And I think an important work. Um, and I'm very happy to pass the microphone now to Paul Walker. Thanks, Sharon, very much. Um, good morning, everybody. Everyone wide awake, except those of you who flew in three hours ago. You know, um, <clears throat> I want to share all the thanks first, particularly to Sharon. Back, back to Sharon, as they say, and to Mosi Raz, also, who's, you know, chair of uh, of the Israeli Defense uh, Disarmament Movement. Um, we couldn't have done this workshop uh, without their support here in in Israel. Um, and really to all of you, a thank you to all of you for coming uh, here today, but particularly those who've come a long distance. And I think the prize goes to Lenny Siegel over here on <clears throat> my left who came all the way from uh, San Francisco, a um, long way. I thought I was coming a long way from Washington, D.C., <clears throat> through London and then on down to Tel Aviv, but Lenny came all the way from San Francisco to New York and then from New York all the way to Tel Aviv. So. Thank you for a long, uh, couple of long flights, Lenny. But others, too, have come from Europe as well. Uh, let me just say a little bit about Green Cross that, uh, that Sharon mentioned. Uh, largely because some of you may not know so much about Green Cross. But Green Cross was founded 21 years ago by Mikhail Gorbachev, who's in the news these days on, on Berlin, obviously. Uh, so I've worked with Mikhail Gorbachev now for really over 20 years. And I've known him for probably 27 or 28 years. I think since I first met him in Moscow when he was president of the Soviet Union in 1985. Um, Gorbachev established Green Cross to really promote, <coughs> promote uh, demilitarization, uh, environmental protection, and public health. Basically, and that's, it was nicknamed Green Cross originally, uh, oftentimes called the Environmental Red Cross. And I know, <coughs> I know that name has some connotations, positive and negative, here in the Middle East from time to time. And, one country that we were established in uh, for some time, Pakistan, called Green Cross Pakistan, uh, was actually forced to shut down about four years ago because of death threats to the to the whole staff. So <clears throat> we're called Green Cross X, Y, or Z in most countries. We're in about 30 countries around the world. We do a wide range of projects. We do some work here in the Middle East on water. We've been very active in the Jordan River issues uh, uh, between Palestine and Israel. Uh, we do a lot of work in North Africa. Uh, in Central Africa and West Africa on uh, water issues, particularly amongst the poorest communities. Uh, and in the United States, we're called a unique name, Global Green USA, because we got sued by the federal government originally when uh, we called ourselves Green Cross USA back in 1993, uh, because Green Cross is actually the uh, copyrighted name of a federal worker safety program under the federal government in the United States. Little do we know. So. Um, in the United States, it's, a, it's another name called Global Green USA. And I've managed the, uh, what we originally called Legacy of the Cold War Program since 1996. Long time now. It's going on, I think, 18 years. Uh, and I run the Washington, D.C. office. So uh, I work in Washington, manage the Green Cross International Program, which is now called Environmental Security and Sustainability. And we really address the interface between uh, arms control, disarmament, nonproliferation, demilitarization, whatever you want to call it, uh, and public health in the environment. And uniquely for arms control groups, we actually look at that interface quite seriously. Most arms control groups, you know, have really not participated in environmental discussions at all. Most environmental groups have not participated much in arms control and disarmament discussions. So we, we really try to look at the interface between the two. And Gorbachev remains very, very supportive of that. Um, I want to also mention the CWC coalition. You'll notice on your, on your agendas, it's listed as the Israeli Disarmament Movement, the CWC coalition, and Green Cross. Um, uh, the CWC coalition is the Chemical Weapons Convention, CWC coalition, which we established as a project uh, of Green Cross back in 2009. The reason behind that is as we, as we worked uh, for years at that point on the safe and permanent elimination of chemical weapons stockpiles, mostly in the United States and Russia, uh, we realized that it, to really strengthen the international multilateral agreement 
uh, the Chemical Weapons Convention, which is headquartered in The Hague and implemented by a group called the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, OPCW. Most people say OPC what? And I said, no, it's Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. Um, we realized there was very little civil society involvement. There were probably on average, uh, some of my colleagues here, Jean Pascal and others know well, probably on average 10 uh, NGOs, non-governmental organizations represented at the annual conference of states parties, what we call the CSP, uh, which takes place the first week of December. Um, and we realized, along with the Director General, who was an Argentinian diplomat at the time, uh, that we really need to engage civil society more. The public, uh, arms control groups, uh, environmental groups, uh, to really work more towards strengthen and bring other countries involved into the treaty regime. So we formed a international coalition. We began soliciting other interests. We never had any NGO from Latin America. We had, we had never had, to my knowledge, any NGO from the Middle East. Uh, we had never had any NGO participate from uh, Africa itself. And so we, it was all European and American. And so we began to build this coalition. We solicited Sharon to, from Israel to participate. And uh, at the last five-year review conference, a year, about a year ago, uh, we had over 150 NGOs register from all over the world. So it's an effort to really try to build uh, public recognition, public awareness uh, of the importance of a universal chemical weapons convention. And as we'll talk about subsequently, uh, the fact that 190 countries have now joined the treaty regime. Uh, Syria, of course, last year being the 190th uh, state party. And there are only six countries remaining outside the treaty regime now, and one of them being Israel. Uh, it's Israel, Myanmar, South Sudan, Angola, and uh, Egypt, and North Korea. It's not a very impressive group, to say the least. And so <clears throat> you'll hear discussions about Israel should actually probably try to remove itself from that group as quickly as possible. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that more. So. The goals, the goals here really today from my perspective, and I think Sharon and others share this too, is really to, for all of us to better understand uh, the, op the options for Israeli ratification of the Chemical Weapons Convention. I mean, Israel's in a good position in that it's signed, as, as Sharon said, uh, back in 1993, along with over 100 other, 125 other countries. Uh, and by entry into force, I think, and shortly thereafter, we had almost 100 uh, countries, I think, member of the of the CWC, and today it's now grown by another 90 or more in the last decade, over the last decade. So we're up to 190, as I say. I think secondly, we we have to realize the importance, I think, of the Chemical Weapons Convention and the abolition of chemical weapons to a weapon of mass destruction free zone in the Middle East. So we'll talk a little bit about the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention, uh, the Non-Proliferation Treaty, and nuclear weapons. And then I think we have to recognize the importance of all this to really global security. Uh, any of these stockpiles, whether it's in the United States, whether it's in Russia, whether it's in Albania, you know, whether it's in Syria, is not just a regional threat, but in fact a global threat. And so uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more. And I also wanted to mention, I think it's really an auspicious time uh, for us to be discussing this. You know, we're at the end of the Syrian uh, weapons, chemical weapons destruction program, and I'll talk more about that. We've been very involved in the Syrian operation for the last two years now, uh, particularly the last year since they joined the treaty regime. Uh, we're at the 25th anniversary of the fall of, Ber of the Berlin Wall, and I was actually there two weeks after the fall and had my little chunk of the Berlin Wall and hammered, hammered away with thousands of others right behind the Reichstag. Uh, just by circumstance, we had a seminar on common security in, in, uh, in Berlin at the time. It's also the uh, 100th anniversary of the major use of, of World War I and the major use of chemical weapons, uh, which will come up to on April 22nd uh, next year, uh, when the Germans first, first use chlorine, whose name we've heard again, of course, used in Syria and Iraq most recently. And then being a, a military veteran and a Vietnam era veteran in the United States, it's also important to me that this is right at uh, the annual Veterans Day as well. So, and I think that's also a very important day in Israel here for a whole number of reasons. So uh, I'm really delighted to, to be here with everyone and welcome you all and uh, wanna say, I think this will be a, we'll have formal presentations and PowerPoints and 
all the rest, but we really want it to be a very open and relaxed uh, discussion. So uh, I would suggest if people, when Sharon and I co-chair this, if people want to say anything, you know, they should put their, we usually put their, use the old seminar, put your uh, thing up here, your name tag, uh, and we'll recognize you as soon as we can. So with that, I want to turn it over to uh, Mosi Ross and um, have him say a few words too. I want to welcome everybody, especially our international guests, people who came from uh, US and from Europe, uh, especially people who made it uh, for the first time. I hope you'll have some time to see, to look around, to see Tel Aviv, Jerusalem. Uh, probably your family and friends think that uh, you're totally crazy coming to Jerusalem those days, but uh, I believe we can ensure your safetyness. Uh, all these uh, uh, things that we see here, I think that uh, today uh, is a very unique day. I, I don't think that in the history of Israel we had uh, a kind of a seminar like that, that is open. Uh, people were invited from the environment movement. You mentioned, of course, nobody came, but, <laughs> but they were invited uh, and from the peace movement. Uh, it, it's uh, something that is not uh, in closed doors. The door is closed, but not in closed doors. Uh, it's something very unique in Israel. And uh, I want to thank Sharon that is uh, actually, uh, she funded this, uh, this movement, this uh, uh, and uh, she, she did not only fund this movement, she funded this idea in Israel, because nobody has talked about that until a few years ago. Uh, Sharon mentioned two members of Knesset. They did not, uh, they would not, would have not think about, you know, promoting these ideas without Sharon. It just, she is, uh, <laughs> she is the, the real member of Knesset uh, uh, behind these two members of Knesset who are doing excellent uh, work, in, uh, but, but still they need somebody to, to tell them or to ask them uh, what, uh, uh, what to do. I think that uh, it's going to be a privilege for us to, to listen to you, uh, experts, international experts uh, about uh, chemical uh, weapon. Uh, I, I was surprised because I thought that uh, the process in Syria uh, could have been, uh, I think, an uh, opportunity to raise this issue in Israel, to talk about that, uh, to, make a, to make a case of, out of that, but it never happened. Israelis are, uh, for many reasons, many reasons, are just, uh, I think their main interest is what they call security. And you cannot convince them that what we say uh, gives them more security than what they think because they look it in a very, very narrow uh, way. And you can uh, see if you look around, and you, if, you, if you listen to the news, if you read the newspapers, you, you, can, uh, you can feel it. Uh, safety is just to, be, uh, to segregate ourselves, not to listen to everybody, to listen only to ourselves, uh, not to trust anybody. We don't trust uh, the international community. The mayor of Jerusalem, who are going to visit uh, on Wednesday in Jerusalem, uh, said, I cannot translate that to English, but he said in Hebrew they, that the international com community is Hazuya. How, uh, Elisha, how you, you, would you say Hazuya in English? In a state of hallucination. <laughs> okay, 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 but it's way more, I think, in Hebrew. Like all. Everybody in the world is stupid, uh, except of me, the uh, mayor of Jerusalem. I, I'm the only one who knows what to do, and the people, maybe the people who voted to me, for me, but uh, the international community, it's not you, or me, or leftists, or liberals, or, you know, or this president, or that, the international community <laughs> in this situation, but... It's very sad to say, I think that he expressed mas wh what uh, most of the Israelis uh, think, in, uh, uh, maybe in a, in a terrible way. Uh, I want to uh, thank uh, Green Cross, uh, Switzerland, and Mr. Kaspar Haller for the support in, the, in our movement uh, all, over the, all over the year, or I would, should say all over the years, and Mr. Paul Walker to uh, the Green Cross International for the support. Uh, in this uh, particular uh, very important and pioneering uh, workshop. And uh, I hope that uh, in the end of this uh, two or three days, including the Knesset event, uh, we 
will be uh, more clever uh, in the main question, which is how to promote uh, this issue in the Israeli society. Uh, so I hope all of us are going to, to find interest and to, to learn from this, uh, this. Thank you.